Um, today, yesterday's um, gold breakout of um, those sort of like weekly, daily highs. Um, I'm going to talk about sort of how sort of how the cash profile is, um, sort of like the open drive that you got from a cash that's sort of open and sort of like a bit of congestion, and then you get the next explosion through the highs, um, etc. And sort of how you can then look into how you want to access it. And there's sort of there's sort of three places, maybe four places you could have got some good access, or especially when it starts to break higher um, and leave the low volume after it spent a bit of time. That's when you can uh, execute sort of the best way of this. So you had the up move, etc. from the overnight, obviously opens 120. And this is where you got sort of the bit of congestion first before you eventually got the break. So sort of this sort of up move here then triggers then the next break of, you know, the next key high and then you've got the extension much higher. And for me, you're sort of looking around here, which was the level of the previous range where you had some lows. So for me, it was sort of, ideally you want to be in as close to this and find some good structure to play the break and then execute as we go higher. And then this sort of cave here, that leaves you your conviction. And then this is when it's sort of leaning in your favor. Um, and then you're looking for the next wave higher. And then I didn't start getting in till around here because I missed this bit. This only literally spent about three minutes before it then goes higher. But from looking for it overall of sideways break, and then that's your conviction there for the, the break of the highs. And you can see with the price action, etc. after you get the open drive, and that's where you, the area you can really commit in with you know much less risk. Bigger picture, this little this box here was um, sort of come to around back just to a bit of the left, and I was looking for you know back to sort of this area. You know, you've got these multiple lows that come in. I feel like the break from there to there in this arrow is probably the you know the key best risk reward. Sort of the, that trigger then triggers that sort of bad high we've got, and then you get sort of the that continuation move, you know. You know, simple sort of in, in the end it could have been 50, 60, 70 ticks if you're executing it quite well. You've got, I was trying to think in the morning that executing down here is probably a nice, nice trade for a break of these. And to be honest, it was a bit messy and choppy, um, but I didn't get on that part. I waited, you know, you're buying, you know, 160 ticks higher, but really you're, that's your best point of trade um, for me just zoomed in a little bit more of that you can see on the hourly you spend sort of three hours there you know four nearly four hours before you start to get the extension so it sort of chops about and then that's when you've got the trigger and then you know the break of that bigger trend line etc so this is just a five minute chart and sort of just looking at it from just how it was so you had sort of you could even if you want to play the move from much lower down, you sort of got this breakout of this little range. You know, you're preempting it quite a long way before because the levels, you know, you're trying to get in a sort of 100, 100, you know, nearly 200, 100 to, you know, 150 ticks in before. But what you get is you get the open drive, you've got the pullback, which, you know, that could have been another entry point, um, which, you know, is, is the most sort of realistic one when you've got an open drive, the pullback, and then, you know, you then play the move. Again, it's a little bit choppy. And obviously you can see the change in the delta here and the volume then starts to come in on the break. You can see that complete change. So ideally that's where your point really of execution is around this zone because down here you're still not 100% right. In my opinion, then you can sort of like play the execution sort of as you go higher. I mean, that's a good entry. Um, but even if you zoom in on the one minute, this is the bit I'm talking about uh, here. So that's, yeah, so that's an hour after the open. So this is a sort of area you can look to execute in. And sort of that, I think this is the open bit down here. Or might be, yeah. That candle down there is the open and there's that pullback. So you can get long in here. Or even, so that, was, that can be your first chance, even in this area where you're literally just holding this level and then you get the big spike. That can be your conviction. As long as you hold there, you can then execute like we do in this point. 
then I'm executing mainly all in that the second box. So there's a few entry points on the way up, which when I, mean, I was looking back through it, you know, maybe I was a bit lack to to the trade because I did try and leave an offer, a bid, sorry, in here, which just carried on going up. So I was like, well, I actually bought into the high and went offside a bit, I think, in this area. And then I actually got out of something literally at the bottom of that. And then we play the move up. But I, I, I want to show you sort of how I execute in here. And then that's where I got out of everything, basically, and let one go to about up there somewhere. Um, but that was the level, that was mainly the target, that was literally just below where you got a little bit of stall, which is always expected. But, you know, there's sort of one, two, three, three points of execution, which, like I say here is, you know, even down here is sort of the same as, yeah, your best preemptive zone in here. And the next bit is, you know, the area where you should have the most conviction if that, that part holds, where you can then execute even more. That's where your high conviction is. And then this bit is where you've got so much, conf too, probably too much confirmation. You know, you can probably either go with less risk, etc. because now you're, you're not, your target's probably 40 ticks. That's the best point of access. So they're the sort of three things that I nailed it down to. Um, so, you know, so you've got your good part. That's the best point. Next area where you're probably not getting as much, if that's your target or if you're targeting much higher. And I'll just, this is just a footprint, like something pretty simple, is that that was the breakup and that's what got left. You know, you can see the cave here. That's what got left. You don't want to then, you get breaking the highs, you're holding, and then continuation. And the same here. This is the bit where I'm executing in. I think I got out of something here because I felt like that would hold. Maybe I should, I should have had my stop probably a bit lower than that. And this was a little bit area where you had some sort of like, like little iceberg or something that was just stopping the market going through. As soon as you go through, I think I bought some more and then it come back, held, and then you get the, the extension higher. So that's where you can, some sort of like price action type of, um, what should we call it, sort of like confirmation, uh, etc. So I'm just going to play it from here, I think. So all you need to focus on is just the gold ladder. You know, I did try to bid much lower down, as you can see, and then I'm thinking this is a bit too late. So the correlations, what I was sort of looking for is the S&P as well was going much higher as well. The dollar was actually doing nothing at this point. Um, so I was thinking, OK, well, let's, what else can we lean on? So that, the, the price I highlighted was the previous, it was that high. So what I was thinking is that, well, you're either going to pull back and you can hold this or you can play into the high and then trade it that way and then get in and see if we do do a blip, etc. And then you're just looking, I was just leaning on what the S&P and Euro stocks and the DAX eventually, that would take the high. You have the bun down on its low. So I'm looking for something, you know, I only got in a little bit small, etc. at this point. Or do through really the whole trade, in my opinion. I, I should have probably been doing a bit better. It's not the, it's okay execution buying at this point. Um, but then you're just looking for that momentum continuation. Obviously, buying the high is always not the best scenario. You could, e you know, you could easily have got, you know, squeezed all the way down here. You know, it sort of like holds. The 88s, etc. at this point, or 88s, 89s, just hold. You're just sort of chopping a little bit before the high. And then you're expecting as soon as that goes, see, now you've got that every time it offered and then they whacked it back up. As long as that whack back up holds, you then should see the high break. You don't want to then see it come back below sort of 80s at this point. Now you probably could have been buying more 88s now. And then that goes, and then you get the blip. And that sort of gives you that little bit of confirmation there, which I end up putting my stop at 89s. And then I still think now you can probably execute even more. It does become a little bit choppy. I was only at this point looking for a spike, but then I was realizing what the potential had, the trade had. And then you got the S&P going as well. And I remembered, you know, you want to be targeting around the 40s. You know, is there just, 
I'll put them up there just in case you get that big blip. That can what have that gold could just blip through and just keep going. And then if you don't have any, it could just do that one blip and then complete back down is what you get. Is what you get at times. Um, but let's get to the next bit where you know it comes back and then basically I think it trades 88. So it comes back through that little cave where you want it to hold. So I only literally got out of two and then looking to get back in. But, you know, I was make sure I tell myself is the main thing is that you then start to get back in quite quickly. If that wants to bounce, then make sure you get back in because your stop's still quite tight at this stage. So I was like, because otherwise you're buying too high, you want to keep your tight risk quite nice and tight at this point. You know, and you've got the S&P on your side as well. And you get a nice little run up. You know, you're always getting these sort of little flushes up. Or if the, and a lot of the time, you, as you'll see, you're getting the people were hitting it straight back down. I was like, as long as those hits back down hold, you can then actually just buy more. Um, which is what, what I was noticing quite a lot, or what you see quite a lot of the time. So you see what I mean by there, it gets a little spike down, and I try to buy some more. And a lot of the time as well as something else you get, what we did get was we got that, we got a spike on no volume and then we got a straight back. And sometimes what you get is this point here where you do hold, where you get that volume churn, that will hold. And then once you start getting through, you can start buying on the way up, which is what I do do. And you sort of get this, someone just selling the O5s each time. And when I was willing to then sell through that, So again, I think the S&P does a nice flush up as well at this uh, some stage, or we might have missed it. But it does a nice flush up to give you a bit more conviction when the dollar isn't actually really doing anything. I did try to put some stops in to think, be, do that, but sometimes I think it might have hurt me if I went like that and then did a quick reverse. So that was sort of the targets around about the 40s and above, if we could get there. So it's quite good at being a bit patient. I was thinking, you know, you don't want to let yourself go off two side. With too much in for that could easily, you know, obviously your risk is around the 88s, 87s. And again, that's when the S&P did a little flush up and left that little cave and all the equities at their highs. So you're sort of leaning on how that was trading as well. And again, you've got this 100 lot. As so that gets taken, you can get you can get some more away. You know, people are willing to buy it in this area. And you get that complete takeout and then I end up chasing it a little bit but up to five. And this is where you, I feel like you could really start to commit to it. So this is where I felt like now, now the trade's really going to like sort of go and start accelerating, which is what it really should do. And then you sort of get, so it just keeps getting hit, hit back down it quite a few times. And then this is what I was feeling at the time is that, you know, got an okay position on and then it go, that always seems to want to do that squeeze, et cetera. And then it sort of holds the area where that buying started and where that selling and buying was meeting. And as long as the buyers come back in and they overwhelm the sellers that were at this stage, it should then unwind back up. Because when it does these low volumes one, you've got to then fill that piece out, create the volume in there for it to then keep going.
you know, you sort of get these 07s that keep re reloading to sort of that 29, 30 lots if it gets traded in. So again, you're coming back to that area where, you know, the, there is buying and then you could, I tried to buy more because um, I did puke one just to keep safe and I did try to buy some more on that flush up. Then really you think, you know, your risk is basically a scratch in the end. This is going to like the momentum drive is going to actually happen. No, I feel like watching it back, you can accumulate so much like size and positioning on this. Like I was just getting in with ones where I really should be, you know, getting in with clips of four, to be honest, on these types of trades where you've got the momentum and everything such in your favour. And again, you get that smack down of sort of like 10 or so ticks. I was like, well, as long as he smacked that smack hold, I think I then get in with some more if we start going, we start going bid again. So like there, you know, this is where you can be accumulating such a, a good position, much lower. You know, even if you're even on side in that first scenario, you know, you've got so much room, etc. And then you're just looking for that sort of 20 tick move now through there. You've got some okay size on, you're just going to let it go. Well, it sort of holds just below the 40s where I think I start to get out of most things. Like you're just looking for that blip, which eventually we do get once we get out of the zone where like the, as you're expecting those sellers here on that resistance bit, you look in there and I felt like you could then cover something below. And then I know I should have probably held the three, should have held half because it's expected. Then you, you know, your risk's really down at the 30. So you've got that cave. You don't need to worry about, you know, you shouldn't be going offside again. You should now, you know, let this trade just play out. Which is, it's just, which is what I should have done, really. But I traded this that part okay, and you know, I didn't really seem to go offside much with, you know, small. So if, if you, I was imagining if they were clips of four, you're going to do, you know, you're going to make, you know, seven, eight times the amount of what you do actually make with just six. Because, you know, you made 30 ticks now, you can cover half and run half even more. Just looking for the sort of the blip when they start taking the highs. And then you get that smack down again, which again, I should have, I think I do start to cover some more because then that blip that comes back to the 34s and sort of comes back at you a little bit more, which again, I covered some. I shouldn't really need to panic too much. And eventually that's pretty much, pretty much it for a minute or so. And then I think you get the one lot left. And eventually, this is what you get paid for when you're in that tight zone. And I mean, I know my targets are around this area anyway, but in hindsight, I mean, if you've got trading more size, you, you learn that you're trading yourself to run more. Or even if you had sort of a quarter of your you know, size on after being on a full size trade, you can just let it go. And because you know, you're, you know, the, you pull back, you know, you're holding 26 to 27's area and you can get that sort of real big unwind, which, you know, ends up paying you another sort of 40 ticks in the end. Um, and, you know, the S&P is still going, the equity is still going in your favour, or, you know, so there's no reason to technically get out of the trade. I know you're, you're running up against resistance when you're playing back into sort of those box ranges um, that you have. You know, and the, you end up feeling comfortable with sort of nothing on. So you need to sort of mainly stress test yourself a bit more on these types of more high conviction trades that you have. You know, because these are sort of the main plays I like to play. And, you know, these trades should be, you should be pushing yourself a bit more, especially for me anyway, after not having the best of, you know, periods at the moment, trying to get stuff together again. Now, like these are the trades that make it, like a massive difference to your months, etc. There's lots of technical players recently that you have that have been, and I seem to just trade the same amount most of the time and not trust the conviction that you've got. It's easy to get worried about this point, um, etc. But as soon as it starts to take this, you can just then aren't you just get a really nice like unwind. 
which is again where you can get paid that little bit extra. Obviously, I don't mind my target was here, so that's not an issue. It's maybe a little bit greedy for holding if you're holding much more. But there's nothing really telling you to get out. And then you sort of get, and then there's your protection again now. The 46s, you don't want to see that go below there. And, you know, it carries on going all the way um, to sort of about 80s in the end. But um, that's what I wanted to show, sort of how the way you can then just sort of commit these different areas. Just a few little pointers, not too many, because I sort of know where I sort of went wrong, etc. I think there was a couple, there was a point where I think not being too aware to what was really going on at, at one stage, um, I was sort of waiting for the market to tell me then to get involved. So that was that first split, which I never actually got on got on so it had to be the second one i think you need to be doing the clips much bigger as well because you're going in six times you know if you go in for me clip five clips of four that's fine you know you're you're still getting it's still the same size it's just a bit more risk and more much more risk you're taking so again understanding more of the high conviction and sort of trading with the more confidence and understanding because talking about it, it's much easier to do but you need to then in the moment have both of them put together and being able to you know put that on as well which the conviction then leads to trading the bigger size and again understanding the trade and how you want to access access it and know when it's really in your favor you know what point in the trade is it you know so in your in your favor you have your conviction and you trade the bigger size and you make that make that sort of like big PL difference and again if you're going to run something there's no point really running one you know try and one like two or three you know cover everything and then try and run for a little bit more just have have, have a run and see how far it can go if you think there's much more actually again so it's sort of those sort of things are the main thing for me you know trying to put the conviction the confidence and you know which will push to the bigger size and accepting that you're taking much more risk on you know a trade etc um but that's it for me. I just wanted to show on how I executed that. I think some good execution if you're you know, trading, you know, just getting in with sort of a one lot, trying to build the position. And then, but then for me now, trying to work on, you know, making sure I stick to what I should really be like clipping and making, understanding the, you know, the conviction and how you access it. And, you know, where's that tipping point where it's so in your favor, you know, you're, you're not wrong.